First of all, I'd like to ask you all to raise your right hand and, and then repeat after me, please. And I'm going to ask I'm going to ask you to state your name. I say state your name. I state your name. I do swear. Do solemnly swear. That solemnly swear, swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I will support, support and defend the Constitution, and Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. The of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. I will, I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Terrific. Good job. All right. Congratulations. Michelle and I were just out in Lancaster today. That's where we came from. I went out and I was meeting with the assistant city manager, Jason Cottle, who's the former city manager of Tehachapi. And what Jason has been doing out there is a tremendous amount of really, really creative, innovative types of strategies to revitalize their downtown, but also to find ways that their, that their city can benefit from this new renewable energy movement that we have in California that's a product of the renewable standard portfolio standards that's come down from the state, and a lot of that has to do with AB 32. And we, we're talking about ways in which a, a local municipality can pony up to the table and be either a public-private partnership with these solar energy uh, projects, um, or actually being the being the power provider themselves and doing it on a wholesale basis. This new economy that East Kern is bringing to the table with renewable energy that's going to rival the oil industry on the west side. You know, for a hundred years, this county's government has been subsidized by the oil revenues from the west side, and we now have an opportunity in front of us to balance that out. She has done an unbelievable job. She has also probably trained me in some areas in finance, and I'm sure the next one will even want to train me some more, but we'll see how far that goes. But Charlene was a guiding force for this district during this decade. Charlene? Gerald Harris made all tournament in our uh, in the runner classic. Gerald, how do you think you did in this last tournament? Well, I think I did all right. I think we could have done better, but on the notes, much improvement to be done. But okay. on the we'll do this tournament coming up. Okay, and then, yeah, that leads me to my next question. How do you think we'll do at uh, Fillmore? Uh, I think we'll do good. I'm working hard at practice. How do you think you did in the uh, tournament this past weekend? I thought I did okay. Could have improved on a lot of things. I could have done a lot of things better, but I thought we did we did we did fair for what we what we had as a matchup against. But I thought we did okay. Right. Could improve though. Yep. You bet. Uh, now you got the uh, Fillmore tournament coming up uh, this weekend. How do you think you guys will do there? I honestly, I hope we do well. I hope we honestly. I think we should go to the championship game. We should. How do you think you did in the uh, our, in our last tournament? Uh, I think I did all right, but uh, there's more there's room for improvement. I think I need to box out more. Uh, shoot the ball more and move the ball quicker. We're at the home office of Hall Ambulance on 1001 21st Street, also though on O Street. And this is their main garage and administration building. We're going to look at the new ambulances and the equipment in each ambulance to hook a patient up to transmit that information on to the hospital. We'll take a look at our electrical plug. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a uh, safety feature to make sure that we don't wind up having an ambulance that takes off with the plug. Looks like a 747 uh, in here. It pretty much is. We, uh, we have uh, several things that have been added to our new ambulances. One of them is a, and I won't sound it for you, but we actually have installed train 
horns in the ambulances. Ah. One of the things that's a, a real concern for us from a safety standpoint, as they start making cars better and better and better and ah. more soundproof, 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 sure. is how does an emergency vehicle let someone know who's listening to the radio, they're not looking at the rear view mirror, maybe, <coughs> excuse me, maybe they're dealing with their kids, how do we let them know we're behind them? Right. We figured we'll take it up a notch and uh, have installed uh, what effectively are train horns in all of our ambulances now. <laughs> so we have, the other thing is that mm. we have two sirens. Mm -hmm. So we have an electrical siren and then mm -hmm. we have one that's very much like the old electromechanical or, or what you called growler, mm -hmm. which really is kind of a throwback to the old air raid sirens. Ah. When, when uh, Back in uh, World War One and Two, they had these sirens that they would hand. That's crank. right. That's right. I've used one in a parade uh, before. Well, there you go. They are a mobile gateway back to the ambulance. All of mm -hmm. our ambulances are Wi-Fi hotspots. Mm -hmm. So any data that we put in here is kept in the ambulance and then uh, transmitted from the ambulance back to our uh, secure oh. server here at Hall Ambulance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you say Wi-Fi, so. If I'm in Rosamond and uh, and go out on a call and come back, then all of a sudden that information is being transmitted down here. Frequently, our folks here in Bakersfield know that you're being transported and what's going on before you get to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just that quick yeah. that uh, things are happening nowadays. You'll notice the uh, dual air horns yeah. that we talked about and then the dual uh -huh. sirens in right. front. One uh -huh. of the things that, that we've done, um, years and years and years, the sirens were located above the driver compartment. Yeah. We found that that led to a lot of hearing problems and, oh. and that sort of thing. Sure. So by moving the sirens down low and the horns down low, they're still right. just as effective. They're actually probably a little bit more effective because they sit a little bit further forward. Right. But they... Uh, have cut way down on issues for our drivers. All of our ambulances, uh, again, because they do work in the metro area, have to be equipped with fog lights. Uh -huh. So we've gone to smaller fog lights. Uh -huh. I which see. really help us out a lot. It used to be stored inside an ambulance. Yeah. We've moved it to the outside so it's easier for our technicians and our uh, paramedics to get a hold of. Sure. So here we have our backboards, all of our uh, spinal mobilization equipment. Yeah. And this device is a stair chair. You can just about do a, a complete story on that device. Uh huh. A significant uh, commitment made by uh, Mr. Hall. And I think this is one of the few companies where you'll find these in all of our ambulances. Yeah. But it's amazing how much easier and more comfortable it makes it for us to be able to get a patient either down a flight of stairs or one of the other places that we really use this is uh, in mobile homes where it's very, very tight and you can't get a gurney in there. This device actually breaks or uh, comes into a chair, mm -hmm. makes it much easier to move patients around, much more comfortable. Oh, this is the inside that you hope you never see, but if you do, exactly. so you're in the right spot. The inside of one of our uh, new generation ambulances uh -huh. and uh, just in general in looking at this um, there's a lot of things. One is that the uh, space to be able to walk in between the gurney and what we call our squad bench uh -huh. is much wider. So yeah. it actually gives us more room to uh, take care of the patient. When we uh, go into uh, a house Mm -hmm. We take our stretcher and we want to be able to make one trip into the house yeah. and one trip out of the house. Right. So we want to take everything with us that we would need to stabilize the patient to get the patient out to uh, our ambulance. Yeah, yeah. So we take in what we take in with us. This is our what we call our first in bag. Yeah. And this is going to have uh, medications. It has uh, respiratory equipment. Sure. And uh, uh, and bandaging equipment. And then yeah. we also take in our cardiac monitor. In addition to being a cardiac monitor, it also does blood pressure monitoring. Oh, wow. It does pulse monitoring through the finger, uh -huh. through what's called pulse oximetry. Uh -huh. So we can tell how well a patient is being oxygenated just by monitoring with this fingertip device. One of the uh -huh. other things that we, we can do with this new monitor is we have what's called in tidal caponography. <laughs> That's a big word, and I'll ask you to spell it out later. Yeah, a <laughs> test afterwards, yes. right? So, in tidal caponography, if we have a patient who's not breathing at all, yeah. we can actually hook this device up to the tube that we use to breathe for the patient, uh -huh. and it tells us how effectively the uh, patient is being ventilated.